Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. Either your first short film or even when you applied to, to or, or went to uh, L.A. for the first time, what was mm-hmm. the biggest fear you had to overcome? Because a lot of a lot of people listening might have not even taken that first step to walk towards the path of following something that they're passionate about, and they have something blocking them. What was that? Was there a fear, or did you just go gun ho? Well, well, I mean, I, to to be true, really honest, my father had gone bankrupt when I was in college, mm-hmm. and I had applied and had been accepted to law school. Oh wow! So. Ironically, when you get accepted, I don't know if it's still true now, but in those days, when you got accepted to law school, uh, they and, and I had gotten this fellowship, they they gave me a, um, a what, what's it called? There was um, the, uh, the possibility of, of coming back uh, the year after or, or, or they were able to attenuate my acceptance. Mm-hmm. And so I had that um, thing, that piece of paper, and my greatest fear is that I would have to go back and go to law school because oh. I just, I really had, 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 had no wish to do it. I had applied because I was scared and, and, and I was a middle-class kid who thought I had to somehow have something to fall back on. Right. And so I guess, you know, um, yeah, that continued for several years because while I was starving and mooching off my girlfriend who was willing to, you know, let me stay in her, this little rented house. And, and I was, even if for years after that, when I was a script reader and the various things that I did to try to make money, those people who had graduating and clerking for Supreme Court justices and going to work for white shoe law firms and making a shitload of money and, and really advancing in the world. And I um, was not as none of us do right away. And so there was a, you know, a certain period of time, I would say the two years of film school and maybe two or three years thereafter where I was um, struggling well, as as you would, and and for people in their st- listening today, when you were trying to become a filmmaker, it was not the cool thing to do. Nobody really even knew no. what a film director no, did. <laughs> really, no, that's sort of true. I mean, I mean, look, I went to I went to an Ivy League school, and particularly there. I mean, the the couple years before me, um, the guy uh, I went to Harvard, and the guys from the Lampoon had mm-hmm. come out, and you know, Doug Kinney and 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 those guys. Um, they had not yet made movies, but they were finding their way here. I, I seem to remember seeing Animal House like the first year that I actually was there. I don't remember Animal House, what year it was. Was it about 77? Is that a good guess? Yeah, it, it was around, yeah, it was like late, mid to late 70s. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think in any case, um, it was not a cool, an acceptable thing. There wasn't a mafia of people all from the same school who had come out here and, and there had never been film courses in the school that I'd gone to. Uh, and so it was all very, very new. But when I lived in Paris, all I'd done was go to the movies. I, I, I probably should have spent a lot of more time, a lot more time, you know, doing the work I was supposed to have done, which is working with experimental theater companies. But the Cinematheque was there. Um, Henri Langlois was still the head of it. You could spend four francs, which was a dollar, and you could see three movies at a at a, a six o'clock and an eight o'clock and a ten o'clock show at the yeah. Cinematheque, and it would be the Festival of of Truffaut, or it would, it would be uh, Antonioni, or it would be you know Ozu or Kurosawa, and or and the American films too. And Paris, which few people know, is probably the best revival city in the world. Mm-hmm. So they would have a John Ford Film Festival, or they would have, a, oh, you know, a Preston Sturges Festival. Oh, amazing! And that's all I would do every day. I would just go to the movies. So, so my point is that that um, I was there, and I I at least had a sense of what I aspired to. I didn't know how to do it, mm-hmm. and I did the work at AFI, and I listened. And when all the fancy people would come in, tell me about their experiences, I thought I was paying attention, but then when I would try to go and do the work, it never resembled uh, what Sidney Pollack had been talking about or or what Roman Polanski was talking about as he talked to the students. And I I just wasn't getting it. Uh, and I felt um, despairing about that. And 
frankly, it wasn't for several years of just doing work that was mediocre. And until one day the penny dropped and I can't really explain exactly why it happened when it happened, mm -hmm. but something um, was revealed to me about the relationship between what I wanted and what the camera saw, what I wanted to, to say and what people said uh, in, in the actors in their mouths and how stories were told. And, 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 and really it happened like Helen Keller at the pump. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. the miracle. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that moment when, when she's got Patty Duke is there and she's pumping and she goes water and she goes, Oh, the water. Oh, and suddenly at that moment, suddenly she can um, understand language. And for me, that was film language. And, and from then it was a very, a very, a fast trajectory after a very little trajectory, it then began to really um, gather steam. But you struggled for years until that moment happened and, 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 and just got yeah, in there. I mean, I'm, yeah, I would say the aggregate was, was certainly, certainly five good years of struggle. Um, mm -hmm. And by struggle, I also mean self-loathing of getting an opportunity <laughs> to write something and then seeing it was bad. And even when I got an opportunity to do a television movie, mm -hmm. finally, it was bad. And then the next one was just as bad. I mean, the, I mean, I'm not sure that they knew uh, at ABC or even the producers how bad it was, but I knew how bad it was compared to what I was trying to compare myself to. Sure. Uh, and I was embarrassed by it. To watch the rest of this interview, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com.